This video is probably going to be very popular among the minute number of you that have the Hello friends! It's The Stitches. Why am I not centered in the frame? Is that better? Am I... Did I, did I inch out of focus? Today we're going to talk about a small Portland-based company called Sock Dreams. Sock Dreams was one of my favorite brands before I went fast fashion free, and they're still one of my favorite brands now. I was going to hold out to buy new socks and new basics until I found a 100% perfect, sustainable brand that carried the colors that I wanted, but I just didn't find anything. <laughs> I wasn't impressed by Pact. I wasn't impressed by Organic Basics. I just don't know if I believe that they're not greenwashing. I still want to try out some of the handmade options on Etsy, but those are understandably much more expensive than machine-made socks. I absolutely think that the prices that they charge for handmade socks on Etsy and really handmade anything on Etsy is fair. I just personally can't afford to have a sock drawer full of nothing but beautiful beautiful handmade socks, unfortunately. So I decided that the best option for me was honestly just to go back to Sock Dreams. Let me demonstrate. This is a pair that I've had for over five years, and this is a pair that I just bought, and I mean, they don't look that different. You know how the most sustainable thing to do is just to buy less overall? And you know what makes it easiest to buy less overall? Is to buy the best quality that you can afford. A small collection of these socks in all of the main colors that I coordinate with will last me for a long time, which will prevent me from needing to buy more socks from sustainable brands in the future. And honestly, I really don't think that any of those brands are more sustainable than Sock Dreams, but we'll get into why. I'd rather get a slightly imperfect option that I know is high quality and will last me for years and years and years than an option that I know is sustainable but is going to need to be replaced frequently. So altogether, I have seven pairs of these socks now, and I really don't think I'm going to need to buy more socks anytime soon. So let's actually review these socks. So starting with the old pairs, I have lilac thigh highs, I have pink thigh highs, and then I also have this pair that I actually had to pull out of the laundry. <laughs> these are my black thigh highs. So these ones I've had for years and years and years. This still has a little bit of cat hair on it, despite the fact that I just washed it. Um, you'll notice the reason that I didn't get the pink version this time around is because this one's just a little bit salmon-y. Like, it's just too... It's not bubblegum enough. I really... My only complaint is that the pink just isn't bubblegum enough for me. That's it. They have quite a bit of stretch to them. But this isn't one of their more stretchy pairs. I feel like this is more one of their like medium size socks. I just kind of roll them up like this for storage. But they're actually long. They're long enough to actually be like thigh, thigh highs. They go up all the way. You can even cuff them and they're still thigh highs. A lot of times I'll buy socks and it'll say that it's a thigh high and it's barely over the knees. So that is not the case with these. And we have our nice new clean pairs. So I bought three pairs of the classic ribbed boot sock. I got the lilac, the plum, and the white, although it looks like the lilac is just a tiny bit longer than the other pairs. This is my old pair of lilac socks, so just so you can see the color comparison, the new ones are just a tiny bit more vibrant, but I mean, after years and years of constant washing and wearing them, like, in the fall and winter months, I live in these socks. So the fact that it's only just a tiny bit more vibrant on the new sock, and like, again, this was years ago, they could have slightly changed the dye batch since then, so who really knows? Yeah, it's just the teeniest, tiniest little bit of difference. It's not even really that intense. Like, this one's just a little bit, just a little bit 
brighter. So after five years, this pair is going to look like this pair. Uh, I'm not mad about that. And then the other pair of socks that I got is the ribbed M stockings in the color ivory. And this is basically the new version of these. I believe these, my old thigh highs, were also the ribbed M stocking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are exactly the same. The only thing that kind of bugs me about these socks is that the top doesn't have any, like, ribbing on them. But I usually cuff them anyway, so it's not like you can really see it. It doesn't really matter. The same thing on here. There's not really, like, a ribbing to it. I mean, this is ribbed, but, like, you know how socks usually just have that little bit of finishing on top where it's just... It's a slightly different type of knit and it kind of just, I don't know, it feels like unfinished. But I mean, these socks have still held up for so many years that I, I really don't think it matters. It's really more of a taste preference more than anything. I also want to say that these socks did not come wrapped in plastic. This sock had this little bit of yarn tying it up and then it had this card. And then on these socks, I'm just gonna... And then the boot socks just had this card attached with the little, you know, the little plastic thing that they put on clothing stuff. So every single pair of these socks is made out of 80% recycled cotton, 20% acrylic with elastic in the cuff. You can see how here it's kind of pinched in at the top. It's because it's got a little tiny bit of elastic inside of it. I think you can see it better on some of my older pairs because it's kind of worn a little bit and come out a little bit, but you can see the little white threads through here. That's the elastic. And then the tag also says, made in the USA, designed in PDX, so Portland. And then obviously SockDreams.com. The only real plastic waste is like the bits that they attach the tags to, the boot socks. And then they use the reusable eco-enclosed mailers, so they have that little, that little strip you can pull off and then reuse it. So for my whole order, this is all of the waste it produced. Just the mailer that can actually be like reused. So all the waste waste is actually the the receipt that has all my like address info and stuff on it and then these four cards and this little bit of yarn like that's it this is all that is <laughs> not an actual product i don't consider myself low waste or anything like that but i do enjoy when a, a brand has minimal packaging. So let's look at the boot socks. The plum has like a little bit of a lighter thread in it as well. So it's not like all one color of purple, but it does kind of blend together. And then the inside of the foot at the bottom here is fleece lined. So it keeps your foot warm. Portland is a very rainy city. So these socks are designed to be able to withstand dreary, rainy, cold, wet weather. The foot of these socks is thick enough that you can actually darn these if you get a hole in it, you can repair it. They're not like the socks that you get at like Hot Topic. Like, you know how thin those are that if you darn them, if you patch those, you can like feel the repair more and it kind of like hurts your foot. But these socks are thick enough that if you get a hole in it and you repair it, then you're not really going to notice it as much because the sock itself is thicker and it can kind of cushion it more. And then of course the ribbing also on these has a good amount of stretch on it. And just to compare the foot on the new socks, I'll show you the foot on my like black pair just because it's not as gross as the pastel pairs that have been worn for five plus years. Black doesn't really show stains as much. You can tell that they've been worn in. You can tell that they're in used condition. They're not brand new. They're not as like held together as the new pairs are. You, you can tell that this this has been washed many, many times and has been worn, but there's no holes in it. I haven't worn a hole into a single one of these socks yet. Whereas every other pair of sock that I've had has gotten a hole in it in like two years. <laughs> if that. So I also wanted to show you some different color differences. I know for us in like weird fashions, this gets weirdly important, but I wanted to show you the difference in color between the plum and the black. And then I also wanted to show the difference between the ivory and the white, just in case you were like, well, I don't know what looks like what when it's actually going to be photographed. So if you're doing like a cosplay or something and you want to know the color difference or if you're just really particular about colors like I am, this is the cream versus the white and 
the plum versus the black. I also want to specify that these are part of Sock Dreams' in-house brand. Those are socks that Sock Dreams has made for them specifically. Nobody else sells those. Sock Dreams also carries like other brands like Leg Avenue, for example. And a lot of those other brands don't have the same quality or sustainability as the Dreamer socks. They do have a section on the website where you can organize the socks by brand so you can choose the, the house brand socks, the Sock Dreams brand socks, and look at specifically those. You can also choose to look at specifically the plus size options. They do show on the website how far each part of the sock can stretch, and they have the full fiber content of every one of their socks, as well as the country of origin, which I think is really cool. So yeah, if you do want to order from Sock Dreams, I highly, highly recommend sticking to their house brand stuff, because it is just, it's superior quality, it's gonna last you so much longer, it's gonna be warmer, it's actually designed to survive in sweater sock weather. And I do feel like these are way more cost effective. Like yes, one of these pairs of thigh highs is $20. And yes, one of these pairs of boot socks is $8. But comparatively, that's not that bad. And these last so much longer that it's worth paying just that tiny little bit more per sock. I wear the thigh highs usually with skirts and stuff in winter and I barely feel the cold. And I live in Washington state where the temperatures get deep into the negatives. And again, I haven't needed to make any repairs on these after owning them for years. And with that, I will send you back to seated Catherine. So, while Sock Dreams does have some unsustainable products, I think this is far from the worst brand that you could be putting your money into. And they do make it a point of being as transparent as possible. For every pair of socks on the website, they list the manufacturing country of origin as well as the full fiber content, so at the very least you know where your clothing is coming from and what it's made out of, which isn't always something that we have the luxury of these days. What? What is a chiffon blend, Bonchons? What is that? Plus, considering the fact that they give the full measurements for each pair of socks on their website as well, you also know that the socks are going to fit you, they're going to look nice, and they're a high enough quality that they're going to last a very, very long time, which isn't something I can say for any other sock brand. In conclusion, I have no trouble supporting Sock Dreams because honestly, they're pretty conscious and you could do far worse. And in terms of socks, I really wish that that wasn't asking for a lot, but it kind of is. At least they're one of the better affordable options and the owners seem to genuinely care about not aiding in the world actively being on fire. So if you're looking for high quality socks that can withstand the upcoming cold weather and also work for alternative fashion and come in lots of colors, then I strongly recommend checking out Sock Dreams. That's all for today. I hope everyone has a good day and I will see you all next time. Bye!